Mountain Man Digital, and today we're going to talk about your IPA. And I don't think I'm talking about beer. Welcome back everybody, it's Charlie with Mountain Man Digital, and today we're going to talk about your IPA. You're probably wondering what that stands for, unless you read the title of this video and clicked on it. So your IPA is your ideal patient avatar, and it is so important for the sake of marketing, especially in today's climate, that you have an understanding of who your ideal patient is and what their life is like. So that's what we're going to cover today. Let me just erase this inflammatory picture. And now we're ready to get going. So your ideal patient avatar is an image that you have in your head of how your ideal patient looks. Okay? And it really is an image. It really should be that you either have a few patients already that really fit this mold, or you have an imagined image of who these people are. Either is fine. Absolutely. I talk to chiropractors every day who have an idea of who their ideal patient is, but they're not seeing a single one of them. And that's a real bummer because for a lot of you guys, you got into this profession to help people in a certain way. Obviously, it feels great to help anybody, but if you can help more people, that's always better, especially if they're the kind of people you want to help. And it should really be fully developed. It should be a three-dimensional person in your mind, all right? So what I mean by that is you should understand a lot of different information about this ideal patient of yours. All right, we're gonna cover some of those right now. So number one is, give them a name, okay? You can't have a full picture of someone in your head unless they have a name. So let's call this guy Joey. This is Joey, this is Joey Martin. I don't know why, that's his name. This is Joseph A. Martin, okay? And for your practice, Let's say you like athletes. So he's an amateur athlete. Oh, boy. Steph, don't look. So he's an amateur athlete. And he is 29 years old. What sport does he play? Let's say he plays soccer. He plays soccer for a local semi-pro team. Okay, and what we're building out now is what I would call his demographics. These are the things that uniquely specify who Joey Martin is. Okay, so we're going to put over here demographics. These are the things that directly specify who he is. Now, you can also get into even more important, even more specific stuff, perhaps like specific injuries. Right? Has he had some specific injuries to his knee, his back, his neck, anything like that? Are these certain things that you want to help this 29 year old soccer athlete with? Okay? You see how this is coming together? Now, the next thing you want to really start to understand about this person, and this will take some research on your part, is their goals. Okay? And what I like to write next to this is their why. Okay. So, the goals that Joey has as a 29-year-old semi-pro soccer athlete. Get out of my hand, erasing rag! Goals. Soccer athlete. What do you think they might be? Is this 29-year-old trying to go pro? Maybe. I'm not sure. I don't really know how the semi-pro to pro transition scene works. Okay? That's something that you, as a chiropractor looking to work with Joey, need to find out. Is he thinking about going pro? Why is he going pro? How can you help him go pro? Okay? These are the types of things you need to think about. If you're just looking at a guy who likes to run 10Ks, you know, you're looking to get into the market of 
successful upper middle class males who are amateur distance runners, do 10Ks, marathons, and maybe like an Ironman once a year, right? What are their specific goals? Finish X number of races, total number of miles this year. What's their goals? Okay? And there's no way to guess. There's no way to infer. There's no way to know unless you are a part of your own target market, right? Which happens all the time. Absolutely. But there's no way to infer unless you are. And even if you are, it would be good to ask other people in the target market about their goals. Okay? Talk to them. Go to the events. Friend them on Facebook. Okay? And just say, hey, I'm a chiropractor in town. I really just wanted to ask you some questions about what your fitness goals are this year. Because I want to make sure I'm doing the right stuff for my patients. Okay? And you can say that in person. You can say that on a Facebook message. You can call them on the phone. Whatever works. But this takes work. And this is the most important part. Name and demographics, you can get those out of a magazine. You can learn it off their Facebook profile. You can look at it from a Facebook group. It's not very difficult to get that information together. And everybody has that. This is like the classic Facebook marketer trap, right? Where they say, I know everything about them. I know their demographics. I know where they hang out online. I know the type of stuff they buy, blah, 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 blah right? These two pieces without a goal or a why are completely worthless for you actually bringing these patients in the door because you're not offering them anything they actually want because it doesn't pertain to their goals and it doesn't get them closer to their why. Okay, and we're going to cover why in a minute. Don't worry. So it's very important that you do some interviews. I'm going to write it. So there. And you guys aren't going to be able to read it anyway. Because my handwriting's bad. That's the joke. Okay, so you're going to do these interviews. After you do the interviews, then you're going to have a really good understanding of what their goals are. So what's that interview going to look like? So maybe you go to a local sporting event, a 10K or something, right? And you volunteer for the 10K right, talking about sports people. If you're trying to get in at a large employment center, right, and you want to do periods of sittings, go in and do a lunch and learn, okay? And make sure that it is a lunch and learn. Teach them something and learn something about them, okay? Ask lots of questions. And the whole idea is get a feel for what these people are hoping to get out of their lives, Right? So if you're at a lunch and learn at a large employment center near your office, ask these people, so what do you guys do for fun after work? Watch a lot of TV, sit around, this and that, right? Okay, sounds like you guys are going to have a lot of problems with sitting-based pain, right? Whatever it might be, sciatica, piriformis syndrome, could be a million different things. But now you have a good feel for how their life is, right? Very, very different than the fitness-minded people I've been talking about. And you say, okay, well, what are your goals for just feeling good? Like, well, I'd really like it if I could, you know, run a 5K again. Oh, that's interesting. Now all of a sudden there's this burning desire in all of these guys' hearts to actually get out and get active again, but they might not know how to get back into it, right? Why do you want to do that? Well, I want to be able to coach my daughter's soccer team. Oh, I want to be able to go to this very specific soccer tournament next year. Oh, I want to be able to climb the largest mountain in our state. Oh, I want to be able to mountain bike with my friend. You know, see, now all of a sudden there's an understanding for what, what actually wants to be accomplished, right? And this is what's really important, is the why, okay? And when I talk about the why in relation to goals, a good way to think of it is once you, you know you understand these two, your goal, the person's goals and their why, when you can write a page in their voice and it sounds as though you've torn a page out of their personal diary. 
Okay, that's how you want to think of that. So when you're interviewing these people, ask the questions to get a feel for how are you guys feeling lately, right? Do you have back pain? Why or why not, right? Why not could actually be a great question there. Why not? Oh, well, I do a lot of foam rolling even though I don't exercise a lot. Or I actually have uh, gravity boots that I hook to my pull-up bar. You know, that so-and-so from last year recommended I bought it. A third of the office now owns gravity boots. Oh, that's an interesting thing to learn. You know, and this is why it's important to not be afraid to keep asking questions, to get a feel for how these people are. One of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of doctors make when I go in and get adjusted by them is they don't ask me enough questions, right? Because especially if I'm dressed like this, like you don't know that I exercise a lot. I do a lot of power lifting. I'm a fairly dense guy, right? And oftentimes they won't even mention how big I am, right? Until after the adjustment, they go, oh, you're a muscular guy. I'm like, yeah. Could have asked me a few more questions so we could have figured that out. You know, so that's really important. Get a feel for who your ideal patient avatar is, their goals and their why. Okay, and this is the one that a lot of docs really miss. You know, because sometimes docs will ask me, like, okay, you're a pretty big guy, you work out? Yeah, I power lift. Oh, awesome. What type of stuff do you do? And they might actually ask me, you know, how do I equip myself? What's my warm up? Things like that. Stuff that's very important for the adjustment and my goals for it. Okay. But they never get to, why do you power lift? I don't really power lift to compete. I power lift because I like the feeling of moving heavy weights and because I like the fitness aspects of it. I'm not trying to set a new record. I'm not even really trying to set personal records anymore. I just lift for the sake of lifting. And my entire goal behind that is just to stay healthy. It's just to feel good, like the way that I look, with a little bit of extra muscle on me, and be healthier in general for my life. You know, so I also run and I swim and I mountain bike and things like that to keep my cardio up. But they never asked me that. Almost never. Maybe one doctor, you know, has actually asked me, so why do you power lift? I'm like, oh, just for general fitness. You know, I do it just for this. Like, oh, cool. And then we had a great conversation about different other fitness techniques that I can use that might be fun and interesting for me to try just to stay in good shape and be healthy. And that's important because my goals and my why are different than most other people in the powerlifting gym I go to. Their goals are to powerlift and set records because they want to win the state APA trophy, right? Very, very different than my goals. So, or very, very different than my why. And that affects my goals, okay? So this is how you develop an ideal patient avatar. Now after watching that video, all of you might be sitting here and going, but, but Charlie, why, why do this, right? I have a sign on the front of my office, people come in the door, they call me off my Google listing because I followed your SEO guide, link in description, and now I don't really see why I need to worry about my ideal patient avatar. So there's a few reasons why it is so important for you to focus on an ideal patient avatar, okay? The number one reason is going to be for scalability of your practice. If you want to scale your practice beyond just you and your CA, and you want to hire on multiple associates, and you want those associates to thrive and do well in your practice, you need to have an IPA. If you do not have an ideal patient avatar, what are you going to train those associates on? What are you going to train your staff of CAs on? What are you going to train your office manager to watch for the other CAs in the office? What are you going to train your billers for for specific codings if you're still doing insurance? On and on and on, okay? If you're just, I mean, you will accept almost anybody off the street as long as their money is good and they need help, but if you're just marketing to anybody off the street and by some stroke of luck the anybody comes in you're going to have 
cases that are going to be so different and numerous that it will be very difficult to scale. However, if you have an ideal patient avatar and you work towards a very specific issue, goal, and why for your patients, then those patients will come to you in droves and you'll be able to step away from what I call the guru-based model. Dr. Jones is the best, he's the only one I'll see. And you can move into the process-based model. We specialize in helping semi-pro soccer athletes achieve their goals, whatever it might be, okay? And the more specific you get on the ideal patient avatar, the more types of patients just like that will be funneled directly into your business. And the better you will be able to serve them because you have spent so much time studying their specific wants, needs, and desires. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is work fulfillment. Okay, if you love working with young families to help them create a health plan to keep them fit, healthy, and happy, but you're working with a bunch of football players who are on steroids and jacking up their bodies 24 hours a day, you're not going to have a lot of work fulfillment. You know, some people would actually really like working with pro NFL players. Others would not. So it's important for your own well-being and your own work fulfillment and peace of mind that you spend the time to figure out your IPA so that the types of patients you work with are the types of patients you want to work with. It's very, very important. And probably the final piece on the ideal patient avatar is that if everybody is your customer, then nobody is your customer. Okay, it's one of the most trite statements in marketing that has ever been said. But when I actually first started my digital marketing business making websites, I would just build a website for anybody who asked. Right? I had plumbers, I had roofers, I had a custom Porsche restoration shop, um, auto body shops, just, just anybody who wanted to have a www.com, I'd build a website for them. Right? And I was just living hand to mouth, struggling to find new clients. Once I decided, you know, after I injured my back and I uh, got told I would need back surgery, but then a chiropractor gave me a few adjustments and I was not only cured, but back in the gym. Once that happened, I decided that my passion needed to be helping these chiropractors get more patients. And once I learned that, things went a lot better for me. Because now, my ideal client avatar, because you're not my patients, guys, my ideal client avatar became chiropractors. And now my passion is learning more about the chiropractic business, understanding you all more, and helping you get more patients in the door so that your work fulfillment's higher and your ability to scale that practice is better. So that's why it's so important for you to have an IPA. And those are the different ways that you can flesh that out for yourself. If you guys really like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you hate my red shirt, give it a thumbs down. Be sure to subscribe because please. And leave a comment if you have any ideas for other videos, information that you guys want to learn. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. This is Charlie with Mountain Man Digital. And as always, get out there.